broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this afternoon's presentation, Make Better Business Decisions with Analytics. In case this is your first Grow with Google presentation, Grow with Google helps people grow their skills, careers, and businesses by offering free digital skills training and tools, usually in collaboration with partner organizations. And today we are lucky to have the tech incubator at Queens College, Adams Brown County's um, Economic Opportunities. We have the Brooklyn Library, Brooklyn Business Library, and I think we also have, I lost track of my list, Smart, Start Small, Think Big, as well as the Baldwin Public Library. And if I forgot, you guys feel free to correct me um, when you introduce yourself. I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Patia Abdul-Razak, and I'm so excited to be presenting with you here today. Please don't be shy. Familiarize yourself with the Q&A box and you can type as many questions as you like. I usually take a break to answer questions, sometimes in the middle, but definitely at the end. Today, we're going to discuss how you can make more strategic business decisions with the insights you gain from Google Analytics. But before I get started with the presentation, I'd like to invite my organization hosts to greet you guys, make any announcements they may have, as well as to fill you in on all the great things that their individual organizations are doing. So Ying, do you want to kick things off? Sure. Thank you, Patia. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. I'm very happy to co-host this Grow with Google webinar with Patia and other co-organizers. At Tech Incubator at Queens College, we help building um, thriving communities via entrepreneurship. We bring relevant, affordable, and accessible resources to help entrepreneurs, startup founders, and small business owners to launch, grow, and scale their businesses. We offer digital services to businesses through our advisor network and our internship programs. If you need help to build a website, uh, an e-commerce store, implement digital marketing strategies, create a social media campaign, we're here to help. We're introducing a new offering called Wayfinding. If you get stuck with an idea or your business, looking for new ways to pivot and move forward, come and book a 30-minute free Wayfinding virtual session with us. We will help you navigate through your thought process, get unstuck, and connect you with the necessary resources to help you move forward. I will drop the contact information and the relevant links in the chat. I look forward to connecting with you all. Back to you, Katia. Thank you so much, Ying. Lisa, do you want to go next? Yes, thank you, Patia. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lisa Tumbleson Davis, and I'm with Adams Brown Community Action Partnership. We offer a variety of small business trainings and technical assistance for small business owners. Um, we have a business plan class, a website design class. We teach QuickBooks and Excel. We also teach a variety of social media classes and have various workshops throughout the year, in addition to working with Google on these trainings. So um, if you have any questions, I'll put my information in the chat box and just feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Arcola, you're up next. Thank you, Patia, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Arcola Robinson, and I am the Program Coordinator for Brooklyn Public Library's Business and Career Center. Uh, like many other institutions, we are now reopened to the public, and I'm especially excited to have you visit the new Business and Career Center space in our central library, which is located in Brooklyn's Grand Army Plaza. The Business and Career Center was uh, renovated and is now a bright and inspiring workspace that was especially designed to accommodate entrepreneurs, freelancers, job seekers, and anyone who's striving to achieve their financial goals. Our librarians are there to welcome you and assist you, so please do visit us. We have started offering some in-person programming, such as resume and career help, but we continue to offer many programs 
virtually, such as this one that we do in partnership with Google and um, others. The flagship program of the Business and Career Center is the Power Up Business Plan Competition. And for those unfamiliar, it is an un annual competition for Brooklyn entrepreneurs who plan to base their business in Brooklyn. Over the course of approximately five months, participants take classes, meet with a business coach, and write their plan. Eight finalists win cash prizes, and the first place winner receives $20,000. Uh, Power Up is for Brooklyn residents. However, if you are in the New York metro area, New York Public Library and Queens Economic Development Corporation both offer similar competitions for the residents of the communities they serve. So we ask you to please visit us either in person or on our website at bklynlibrary.org slash business, which I'll put in the chat and you'll learn more about the competition and the many other resources and services that we provide at Business and Career Center. Thank you, Patia. Um, now back to you. Thank you so much. So much great information. I hope that you guys take advantage of as much of it as possible. Okay. If you're watching this webinar live, you can access CART closed captions by opening a separate browser window and visiting the URL shown on this slide which is g.co slash grow slash Patia. If you click the gear icon at the top of the browser window, you can change the formatting of the captions to suit your preferences. Today, we have the honor of having Crystal who will be providing live closed captioning for us. Crystal, thank you for being here. Here's a copy of my contact information. A lot of people like to take a snapshot of this slide. Don't be shy. Please do ask as many questions as you'd like in the Q&A. But if anything occurs to you afterwards, you can send me an email or you can simply respond to the automated feedback email that will come within 24 hours. Now, everybody that attends today's session will be receiving a hard copy of the session as well as a link to download the recording so that you have it for future reference. Now you will be getting this follow-up information from your organization host. So try to remember the organization that you registered for the session through, and that is where you would get the copy of the presentation and the slides, right? So what usually happens sometimes is that the minute I log off, I have all these emails asking me for the deck. The deck will not come from me. It will come from the organization that informed you about the webinar. <clears throat> Okay, so setting the stage before we dive into today's workshop. Getting data is not the problem anymore. Believe it or not, there was a time where having access to the data that you needed to make decisions for your business was virtually impossible for a small business because it was so expensive. That's not the issue. We have access to lots of data, to huge data. And Google's opportunity is to take all of this information and make it manageable for small business owners like you to interpret the data so that you can make decisions that will propel your business forward. So when we talk about interpreting data, what we're doing is that we are looking to find the interconnections, the patterns and the themes within the information and building context for genuine understanding. The ultimate goal is to provide actionable insight that you can then use to prove or disprove a hypothesis about your customers. So we're looking at a quote here together that says, data makes your briefcase heavy, but insights make you rich. What this quote serves to remind us is that getting data, like I said at the beginning, is not the issue here. We have lots of it. And if you're already using Google Analytics, which I hope all of you are, anybody that has a website should have Google Analytics installed. It is a free tool. It gives you a wealth of information. Check it out. If you're not doing it, you are missing out on lots of insights in terms of the activity of the visitors on your website. So if you do have Google Analytics installed already, you will know that the data on your web presence is being collected as we speak. So today we're going to talk about how to use analytics to grow your business, right? 
instead of possibly, and a lot of people who install the tool, they get really overwhelmed because all they see is a bunch of numbers and graphs and columns and things, and they don't necessarily understand what to do with that information. So if that is you, you're in the right place because after this session, it is my hope that things will become a little clearer, if not crystal clear, in terms of how you can use all of this information to make the right decisions for your business. So let's kick things off by first defining exactly what insights mean. When I say insights, what am I talking about? So insights help you create more effective business solutions using strategies informed by real consumer truth. So what's exactly happening on your particular website, right? So this is not about everybody else. This is as it relates to your business. So you're able to <clears throat> make decisions and use strategies that will impact your customers. And this could be anything from brand strategies to creative ideas to product in innovations or even your media plans. The trouble is insights are notoriously hard to pin down. If you ask 100 people, you'll probably get 100 different definitions of an insight. What's clear, however, is when businesses look to Google for help when finding insights, they're not just looking for a bunch of data. Like I said, access to data is not the problem anymore. Insights, however, are based on data, but they are novel, credible, and actionable enough to unlock new opportunities for your business. So this is how you know if you're uncovering an insight. A great insight is unexpected yet obvious. An insight should inspire action, so it must be useful. There should be something useful that you are able to do with it. So how do you find these insights? This is where Google Analytics can help. Let's define a few more terms that will be used throughout today's workshop. Data is the info you obtain from users like demographic information, behavior, and activity. And as I go through these definitions, try to jot down notes as they relate to your specific business to see if even if you're not relying on your data analytics, so th let's do two things. If you have Google Analytics installed, maybe as we go through the presentation, you can kind of like look inside um, your analytics and try to figure out what's really going on if you haven't had um, the opportunity or the knowledge this far to do so. If you do not, obviously you'll have to install the tool to get access to this data, to this information. But while I'm going through the next couple of definitions, think, see if you can, at this point, guess, right? Because, you know, you, you may not be um, making these, the writing down these answers based on actual information, or maybe you are just based on the length, the length of time you've been in business and your customer data. See if you can jot down for your business um, the answers to the next couple of definitions. So data. Data is information you obtain from your users, like demographic info, behavior, and activity. So as it relates to your business, who are your customers? Write down the demographic information, the behavior, and their activity. Analytics are patterns and trends discovered within the data. And it's how you make sense of it all and uncover meaningful truth meaningful trends and truths. Insights are the value you gain from data and analytics. And again, remember, insights should be actionable. So there should be something that you should be able to do with these insights. So here's an example that everyone can, can relate to. The data shows you that you had 1,500 site visitors in the past 30 days. Analytics then show you that 30% of them access the site from mobile devices. The insights, however, would reveal that visitors using mobile devices are 60% more likely to convert. That's the insight. Get it? If you're new to data and analytics, these reports can be overwhelming. So let's move forward and look at ways to use data to help make decisions instead of relying on gut instincts. So this involves using tools to see patterns in customer usage. Before diving in, you need to identify goals so that you can ask the right questions to achieve those goals. 
right, let's keep moving. Okay, so this is the agenda. This is what we'll cover together today. We'll start with the basics of using Google Analytics to better drive your business decisions. And then in the next part of the class, we will discuss what data is and how we use it to drive these decisions. Next, we will review the questions you should ask of your data to better understand your customers. And again, if you have been in business for some time, apply these questions and definitions to your own business. Then we'll go into the basics of your Google Analytics account and how you can start collecting data. We'll also look at some reports that can help you answer questions about your customers and their behavior. I will also show you some advanced reports on how you can make um, Google Analytics and Google Ads work together. And then as always, I'll wrap things up by doing a quick recap and giving you some additional resources that you can access on your own time. So let's start with the basics of Google Analytics. I'm interested to see how many of you are already using the tool. Um, so in the Q&A, if you are using Google Analytics already, if you can just let me know, I just like to have a sense of, you know, who's in the room in terms of if this is brand new material for people or possibly you have installed the tool, but you are not yet quite comfortable using it. Just for my own information, I just like to um, kind of take a temperature check. Anyway, so <clears throat> if you're completely new to Google Analytics, Google Analytics is a free tool and one of the most popular analytics options available. It helps you better understand the customer experience on your website and provides the data you need to understand your customers and make decisions based on insights. Google Analytics reports can help you learn about your customers, like their demographics and interests. So you may have, if you're not using analytics, you may have a general idea based on prior customers, who your customers are, but many times you are not getting the whole picture. If you're able to understand visitor behavior on the site and what actions they take, see how customers are actually finding your site and track and record important actions on your site. And of course, these are called conversions. Now, ideally your website should lead the user from one page of useful content to the next page until they finally convert. And when we're saying conversion, it's, you know, measurable actions. And it's not always buying something from you. It could be subscribing for a newsletter. It could be scheduling a consultation. It could be um, downloading a coupon. So this is why you have to think ahead to what your goals are. Google Analytics can help you better understand your audience and the insights into their activity, which of course will give you the information you need to make more strategic decisions. Now, there are many different types of reports that can help you better understand how you are found and how your visitors engage with your site. So you, you are able, in addition to all of this, you're able to get insight into the search terms so when people go to google and they search so the spe specific specific getting town tied too many s's right you will learn which specific search terms and sources drive the most traffic to your site all right so these are all you know this is all information that you may be guessing about that you no longer need to guess you will see for yourself. You'll also get an understanding of the kind of content in your site that your audience is most interested in, as well as evaluate which external channels are driving the most traffic. So if you have a social media page, are people actually coming to the website from that page? If you're doing guest blogging, are those blog entries driving traffic back to your page? If you do a monthly newsletter, are people actually clicking on the visit my website link to visit your page? Okay, so let's move on to setting up Google Analytics. I think that I've sold all the great information that you'd have access to. How do you get up and running? This is how. You can start by either signing in or setting up an analytics account, depending on your situation. So to get where you need to go to, you would go to g.co slash analytics and do one of the following depending on your situation. 
To create an account, you would click Start for free. And to sign into your account, you would sign in to analytics or press the button that says Sign into analytics. Now, I need to mention that there are multiple versions of Google Analytics. Now, if you've already had Google Analytics for a while, meaning you set it up before October 14th of 2020, your reports most likely reflect the older version of analytics, which, which is called Universal Analytics. If you set up Google Analytics after that date, and if you're setting up Google Analytics for the first time for a particular site or app, you will see the newer version of Google Analytics called Google Analytics 4 or GA4. Now, if you're a professional marketer, GA4 is the official recommended version for professional marketers. Now, if you do have the older version of Google Analytics, it is highly recommended that you add the newer version, which is called GA4, to your account. Now, you will not lose any of your old data, and the existing reports will continue to collect the data as well. You will then have access to both sets of reports, and it's kind of cool to compare them to see if you're getting the same information. Now, many accounts will have the options to use what's called the GA Setup Assistant. And to do that, so of course, this is if you have the older version. To do that, you would click Admin on the left side navigation bar. And it's the gear icon at the bottom. Next, you would click GA4 Setup Assistant. And that is the first option in the second column titled Property. Next, you will follow the prompts and set up the wizard. To, that will lead you through the steps to setting up GA4. Now, please note, you got to be a little patient. It can take up to 30 minutes for data to begin appearing in your new Google Analytics 4 property. So you got to be a little patient for that. If for some reason, and this happens to some people, you cannot use the setup assistant, there are detailed instructions in the Google Analytics Help Center, and you would need to visit support.google.com slash analytics. This is also a great slide for you to take a snapshot of just in case you run into problems using the setup assistant. Okay, so once you have created or signed into the Google Analytics account, you will see a dashboard that links to a variety of reports, and this is where people start getting overwhelmed. Reporting lets you visualize data about your users and their behavior across your website. The default reports answer common reporting questions, but you can also customize your reports to fit your business objectives. The reports snapshot shown in the screenshot is displayed when you click reports in the left navigation. Now you can set any overview report to be the snapshot. The right side of the reports Hi, I'm sorry, the right side of the reports highlights a feature called Analytics Intelligence. Now, this is a really cool feature. Analytics Intelligence uses machine learning to help you better understand and act on your data. And what it does as well is it helps you with the process of creating um, multiple reports. So for example, you can type in questions in plain English and get fast answers. And these answers will be automated. So say you wanted to know which of your channels had the highest goal conversion rate. You will type in the questions and the analytics intelligence tool will show you a list of channels ranked by conversion rate. What happens, which is really, really cool, is that over time, the tool gets smarter based on the kinds of questions that you ask. Um, and so it learns what you specifically are looking for. Now, another way to use the tool to analyze your data um, is to uncover major changes or opportunities. For example, it can point out that a certain landing page is performing better than another one. Okay, so what kinds of answers can you find within these reports that can help you to make business decisions to propel your business further? Now that we've gone into setting up the account and all of the possible insights that you can have, let's take a look at what we can actually learn from these reports. I want to introduce you to Eva and Ricky. 
Even Ricky are small business owners who sell apparel through their online store. Up until now, like most of us do, they have been making most of their big decisions for their business, either from their own gut instincts or ad hoc feedback from existing and past customers. And to be honest, if you're doing this, you don't need to feel bad about it. This is what most business owners do before they learn about these tools. So they're at that point. They're like, you know what, let's stop guessing. So they have decided to set up Google Analytics to get a better understanding of what is and isn't working on their online store. So what they're trying to do is make more strategic business decisions. They don't want to guess anymore. They want to see exactly what's going on so that they can plan strategically. Now, suppose they want to sell a new t-shirt on their online store. This is what they've been doing. They've been experimenting with the new designs and really liked one of the prototypes. So what do they do? They decide to add it to the website. Now, Gut Instinct told them that this new design was destined to be a bestseller with their assumed, and notice I said assumed, target audience of females between the ages of 35 and 44. Now, sometimes these assumptions, we can be spot on, but it's almost always better to base decisions and actions on actual data. Now, even if decisions that you guess about or you make assumptions on, you have got, got instincts on, even if they turn out well, right, you may be missing the opportunity to see improvements based on data. So even Ricky can probably tell if their new design is selling or not selling based on sales. Seems pretty simple, right? But without data, they are missing out on a lot of potentially useful information. And worst of all, they could be making completely incorrect assumptions about what is working and what isn't working. And in the long run, that can what? Affect their business adversely. Now, if the new shirt wasn't selling, they might just assume the new design was a flop and cut their prices just to get rid of the inventory. But without collecting the data, they can't really know what's happening, right? So that is where Google Analytics can come in and help. So this is the process for actually utilizing the tools and the reports. This is what you should be doing. And as we go through the presentation, feel free to jot them notes as they apply to your business. So the first thing you need to do is start by outlining the goals. Your goals would be the customer actions that you care most about. Ask yourself, as it pertains to your website, what outcomes do you want? What do you want to improve? One example, and I think the example that most people say, is that they want to improve website traffic by XYZ percentage, let's say 30%. The second question you need to ask yourself is, what questions do you need to ask what information do you need to know to make the right decisions to help you to achieve the goals or the goal? Sometimes it could only be one, sometimes it's several. The art of asking the right question is elusive but incredibly important. The questions you ask should direct all energy for gathering data and insights for action. Asking the right question should always be a function of your own instinct, as well as the knowledge base of your business and customer base. But the answers are always gonna be found in the data. Figuring out which questions to ask gets easier over time as you learn more about Google Analytics. And here's a quick tip. The questions that you ask about offline advertising often apply online too, because it's ultimately the same target customer. And step three, once you have the questions, you now need to determine which reports can help you to find the answers. So let's start with goals. Think about the outcome you want. What do you want to happen? What are you trying to achieve? Everything you do should support your goals. Now, there are many types of goals. So we use the increase in website example. 
But is that goal really meaningful? Because you can increase traffic by 30%, 50%, 60%. But unless that traffic, unless those visitors are doing what you want them to do once they hit the site, then that goal isn't really meaningful, right? So before we go any further, let's talk about what good business goals are. So the framework that's usually recommended is the SMART framework. And of course, it's an acronym. So you have to ask yourself these questions. Is the goal or goals you're thinking about, are they specific and detailed? Can you track them? How will you measure them? How will you know when you've accomplished them? Is the goal realistically attainable? And will this goal help you to reach your overall business goal? So is it relevant to your business? Last but not least, what is the time frame? When do you need to achieve this goal? So going back to Eva and Ricky, here's an example goal that Eva and Ricky might set for their merchandise store to decrease shopping cart abandonment to less than 60% in the next quarter. And I think that that's pretty, right? I mean, for those of you, pretty important, for those of you who have e-commerce stores, I'm sure the bane of your existence are the people who, because um, I do it as a customer, I'm so guilty of loading up the cart with 10 plus items and then getting distracted and going and doing something else. But what happens, right? What happens when you do that? You get the email reminders and the pop-ups that say, don't forget to complete your shopping cart, right? How does that business know that you have loaded up the cart and not completed the transaction. Mm -hmm. This is why having access to these tools like Google Analytics are very, very powerful. Okay, so they could use Google Analytics to find out how many users were adding items to their cart over a period of time and compare that number to the total transactions during that same period of time and then calculate their cart abandonment rate. Guess what? When they did that, they had a rate of 65%. So they were actually doing worse than they thought that they were doing. So in order to reach their goal, they may do some a couple of these things. They may experiment with modifications to the checkout process. And with each change, they could review shopping cart abandonment data to see if those changes were having a positive impact or a negative impact. What they might learn is that by simplifying the site or reducing the number of steps or better yet, improving the load time. So the load time is how quickly the site actually takes to load. For the web pages, they can start to see improvements and lower abandonment rate. And that is just one simple example of how you can use Google Analytics to track and measure your goals. And of course, the goals would be different for every business. So what are your own goals? Take a few minutes to think about them and write them down. And so I'm not gonna give you a few minutes, more like a few seconds, but when you revisit this presentation, definitely think this through for a couple minutes. Okay, so if you do have at least two written down, you're in good shape. For current business owners, think about the existing goals you might have for your business that you want to monitor and measure with Google Analytics going forward. For those of you who haven't yet created your new website, this is a great time to be taking this workshop because you can actually backtrack if you haven't already done so and ask yourself these questions. What purpose do you want your website to serve? What conversion goals will this website have based on the actions that you would like your customers to take? Feel free to write down a few ideas. Keep in mind your website goals may become even more important if your primary business operations have moved to the online space because this will be your primary source of revenue. Now that we have defined goals, we can consider what questions to ask to meet them. So let's look at examples of questions that you can ask yourself. The framework you see represents stages of a business's relationship with customers. 
you ask questions and use those answers to move customers through these phases. First, you need to reach customers with methods like advertising, organic search, social media, and offline promotions. Then what happens next? You need to engage them, correct? Right? Once they see, once you, then you get them to the website, then you actually need to convince them to, to become more engaged with your website, find more information, right? Trust you, right? Then it is conversion time. The goal here is to help visitors complete important actions on the site. For example, you may want them to buy a t-shirt if you are Eva, Eva and Ricky. Submit a form with a question about a bulk order. That would be great. Some wholesale um, orders. Or maybe it's as simple as signing up for a newsletter. Ultimately, however, the goal should be to sustain a long-term relationship to get those customers to return. And you can do cool things like come up with a rewards program, discounts, and things like that. Now, you know, this, these, these, all of these tactics as customers, if you kind of like just take off your, um, your business owner hat for a minute, right, and put on your consumer hat, you will recognize that everything that I'm saying in this presentation, you are actually experiencing the same things as a consumer. Okay, so moving on to the specific questions, right, within the customer journey. Reach questions help you understand brand recognition and awareness and how people find you online. For Eva and Ricky, they might start by asking, what are people searching for? Who are these people that are searching for what they're searching for? How do they find us online? Questions like these are important because if potential customers can't find your business or your products online, then they can't place orders. Now, based on what they learn, Eva and Ricky might find clues that lead them to examine their website and their communication strategy. So you can ask these very same questions of your business as well, of course. Next, let's talk about engagement and the reports that help us an answer engagement questions. Engaged questions involve discovering how or if, when people find your website, if they're actually interacting with it or they're just going and leaving. If they're just going and leaving, we have a problem. So do they navigate to more than one page when they visit their website? If you have videos, are they watching the videos? Do they use the search the search tool to search the site? Do they take advantage of your downloads? Do they look at your menu? Think about other engaged questions that you can ask for your business, or if we're going back to Eva and Ricky, they may ask themselves these questions. Can people easily find their products? Do they create accounts at checkout? Why is it important if you have an e-commerce store for your customers to create accounts? If you just have a bunch of one-time shoppers, right, you have a problem because you're constantly having to come convince new people to purchase for you. It's important for you to see if people are creating accounts upon checkout because that usually indicates an intention at least of returning. So creating a login on any platform usually shows intention for coming back. They may also want to see if anyone is downloading any of their coupons. Moving on to conversion. Conversions turn site visitors into paying customers. Convert questions can help you find out how or if that happens. Now, once people find you online, what do they do? Do they engage? And then once they engage, do they actually purchase? Do they sign up for a newsletter? Do they schedule that appointment? And which channels are the most effective? If you're experimenting with different calls to action, how do those variations impact sales? 
Think about the convert questions that you can ask yourself for your business. And if we're going back to Eva and Ricky, these are some of the questions that they can ask themselves. Is it easy to order from the online store? And even if it seems relatively easy, what can be improved about the process? Hmm, they've been spending a lot of time on social media. What social media channels are actually driving the most sales? And should their efforts be ramped up? Should they keep it at the same level or scale down because it's not having an effect on sales at all? And also, do coupons really help to increase orders? And if so, what types of orders are the most effective? Lastly, you want to convince customers to become loyal return customers who continue to interact with your business and advocate it to others. So same questions help you understand what customers say about you online. So do they like your products and services? Are they giving you positive reviews? Right? And again, think about how this relates to your business. But if we're going back to Eva and Ricky, they may want to ask themselves, um, if a customer bought a shirt with a specific design, would they be interested in other products like it? Possibly different shirt colors. Finding out who their loyal repeat customers are and figuring out a way of rewarding them. And if people are writing online reviews, where are they being published? And are there other places possibly where these reviews can be published as well? Okay, so moving on to some reports. Again, if you set up Google Analytics before October 14, 2020, your reports will look different. Some of the reports that you will find in Universal Analytics, which is the only version, include real-time reports, audience reports, acquisition reports, and behavior reports. So this is what, if you've had Google Analytics for some time, these are the reports that would be the most familiar to you. Okay. So acquisition, these reports show data about how users arrive on your website or mobile app. So by the way, I've been using a website as an example, but you can also use Google Analytics to track activity on an app. And they can help you to develop an understanding of how users find your site. The reports include user acquisition as well as traffic acquisition. So it shows you users and new users. And users are all the people who visit your site, including both new and returning users. Then there's traffic acquisition, right? And that shows data about new se sessions. So the traffic dimensions like medium, which would be the referring channel example, um, maybe you have an ad campaign going and the source would be where the people were before they arrived on your site. And these reports help you understand how users came, where they came from and how they, they got there. Now the report includes the word session to indicate that the traffic dimensions are about new sessions. All right, so for example, session medium is the channel by which new and returning users arrive on your site or app. And this information can help you understand the effectiveness of your marketing efforts. Moving on to your engagement reports. Now, these reports help you measure user interactions on your website or app. Engagement includes more than page views. So people think like, oh, you know, page views, my page views are great. You can measure when users check an account balance, when they scroll down a page slowly. This is really important to you guys because scrolling slowly indicates that they're actually reading. When they view product details or spend the time on a product page or they watch an informational video. So what we're seeing here is a screenshot for engaged sessions. And they're a collection of events that a user triggers within a specific time frame. Now, what is an engaged session? What's what and what is the time frame? An engaged session is a session that either lasts 10 seconds or longer, had one or more conversion events, or had two or more 
page views. Monetization are people buying from you. If you have an e-commerce store, this becomes really, really important. Simply put, like I said, it tells you whether people are spending money with you or not. They let you measure purchases, ads, as well as subscription revenue. And you're also able to see how users interact with items such as the products you sell and measure the steps in your checkout funnel. These reports can better help you to understand your consumer strategy and enhance your monetization strategy. Moving on to retention. Retention reports help you understand how frequently and for how long users are engaging with your website or mobile app after their first visit. In other words, do people come back? And if they come back, when do they come back? And when they come back, how long are they really staying? Now, one note about these reports. This is a useful metric to consider, but the data in the reports should not be taken as an absolute truth because in some cases, the technology cannot track that the visitor has previously come to your site. So it's just, you know, keeping ourselves honest just to let you know the lay of the land. Last but not least, there are demographic reports. The demographic topic helps you classify your users by the usual age, location, language, and gender, along with interest they express through their online browsing and purchase activities. The reports include interactive charts, diagrams, and tables to help you visualize the data. Now, one an additional note here. As online services, including Google Analytics, move away from cookies, demographic insights are becoming less reliable. But true first-party data, such as how people are navigating your site directly, not their demographics, right, is becoming more important. And you can still find all of that information in Google Analytics. Now, we started out by talking about gut instinct versus data. If we asked Eve and Ricky to list out their gut instincts and compare them to the hypothetical data, they might be surprised by the results that the, refer the reports actually revealed. It might end up that Eve and Ricky discovered that most of their gut instincts, which they've been using to drive their business decisions, are completely wrong. Now, for starters, they assumed that their top audience is 35 to 44 year old females, only to learn from the data that most of their customers are 25 to 34 year old males. Or maybe they learn that most of their traffic comes from organic search, not paid ads. But here's the thing, they may learn that the visitors from paid ads are more likely to buy their shirts. Now, why is that important? It means that the targeting of those ads is doing a better job of sending qualified customers to the site because those are the people that are actually spending money. Lastly, they're able to see that most of their purchases are from brand new customers. That is not good. Remember what I said? Indication of setting up accounts means there's an intention to return. So what they're doing is they're constantly working really hard to get a bunch of one-off customers as opposed to having the, the benefit of having return customers. The bottom line here is that without data, you're guessing and making important decision, decisions about your business without the information that you need to make more strategic decisions and Google Analytics can help you to take the guessing out of the equation. Now let's talk about some advanced reporting features. If you've already set up Google Analytics, it's likely that you've been using Dimensions all along and you just did not know it. Dimensions describe your data, for example, the Dimension City describes the city where the user session originates. The value could be Atlanta, Seattle, Harlem, etc. Another dimension could be the device or browser being used. 
Each report includes a primary dimension, and that is the lens from which you can view the data. And sometimes if you want to dig deeper, you can add a secondary dimension. Now, these allow you to layer on another specification to get a more in-depth view of the data that you're analyzing. So, for example, you could set the primary dimension city as New York, then layer in a secondary dimension like browser. So, this will allow you to see how many of your website visits from New York City are coming from specific browsers. Okay, and for some people that that might be important information to have for others, it could be something else. But the point here is that you can drill down as much as you need to into the data. Secondary dimensions are another useful feature that can help you to interpret reports. Secondary dimensions lets you limit the data displayed and it only applies to the current visualization of the data. In other words, it temporarily changes the view of the report you're looking at. Now, you can use dimensions to exclude internal or internal traffic from particular geographies or include only users in a specific age bracket. To add a secondary dimension, you would navigate to the report you're interested in examining and at the top of each table of data, look for that plus sign. You would then click to expand a menu of options and choose the items you want to display in the report. What happens next is that the report will change to reflect that view, and you can simply remove the secondary dimension by clicking the X symbol, which, res which resets the report to its original view. Make sense? Okay, so let's move on to combining analytics with Google Ads. Google Analytics by itself, I don't think I need to convince you guys, it's a powerful tool all on its own, but it has another advantage. It connects and communicates with other tools such as Google Ads. Now this allows your Google Ads reports to benefit from the Google Analytics data if you share it, and I highly recommend that you do so. Here are some reasons why. First, you can learn what happens after users click your ad, and this helps you to understand their behavior, specifically since you're paying, right? You're paying for them to land on your site. This information can help you to understand what's working and what might be improved so you can optimize your campaigns. Secondly, you can target specific users based on their behavior, and by linking your Google Analytics with your ads account, you can also define customer groups by their activity on your website. And lastly, you can better understand your paid traffic and if certain keywords convert or possibly do not convert. So by linking Google Ads within your Google Analytics, you learn if clicks on your ads actually translate to conversions, and that's the bottom line. So this is how you do this. To link Google Ads to Analytics, you must first create an account for each product you want to link. Once your account is set up, you can head over to the Admin section of Analytics, and from there, click the product you want to connect under the Property column. The process for each product will vary slightly, but they all involve inputting or selecting the account you want to link in your Analytics account. Here's a pro tip. Be sure to register all your Google products under the same email address because that makes it so much easier to link the tools to each other. All right, you guys, I know we've covered a lot today. And to be honest, unless you had done this a little bit before and you were able to follow along, this can be a lot to digest, but don't worry. Remember, you get a copy of the presentation as well as a link to download the recording. So you can always, you know, take your time and go through it at your own space pace. So where do you go from here? Lot to do, right? <laughs> First thing you need to do, remember, is to outline your goals. Next, identify the questions you need to ask to achieve those goals. And remember to ask the questions based on the phases of customer engagement, which were reach, engage, convert, and sustain. Then you need to seek the reports that can help you to find the answers.
right? Okay. Now, additional resources that you can access on your own time um, to keep your upskilling going. If you want to sharpen your business and marketing skills, check out Primer. This is a free app available for both Android and Apple devices. And here you can find lessons that are less than five minutes each. You can also register for free virtual workshops to enhance your digital skills and grow your business by going to g.co slash grow on air. There are also on-demand classes, which I find very helpful so that if you miss the live presentations, you can always catch a few good recordings. If you want to get an idea of all that's available with the Grow with Google program, you can check out the Umbrella website at google.com slash grow. One last favor to ask for you when you get this presentation, if you have a few minutes, if you can take this survey so that Google can get a clear picture of whether this presentation is helpful or not, um, some things that you thought that you, you know, wish were added, um, they really are looking for feedback so that these presentations can be as impactful as possible. Okay, so that's the official end of today's session. At this point in time, I have about two minutes before I have to log into my next call. Um, if you guys have any questions, don't be shy. You can just go ahead and add them in the Q&A box. And I don't see any questions. Uh, this is one of those presentations where either I have lots and lots of questions or I have no questions because people are just trying to digest information, which is absolutely fine. Okay, so while I give you guys a couple more seconds to think about whether you want to ask any questions, um, at this point, I'll invite our organization host to come back um, and to close out the session. So Arcola, do you want to kick off the closeout? Thank you, Patia. I just want to uh, additionally thank all the participants, uh, my co-hosts, uh, the attendees for uh, for joining us today and again thank you as always Patia for a great presentation you are very welcome Lisa yeah thank you Patia for presenting today and everyone who joined in I did put my um, contact information in the chat box if anybody has any questions about any of the services that we offer here at AppCal thanks and have a good afternoon Perfect. And Ying? Yeah, thank you, Patia. And I, uh, it's a lot of information. I encourage everyone to, to go over the materials again, the, the, both the deck and the recording will be sent to you. And uh, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. Everyone, thank you for being here. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, your week, and be safe. Oh.